Turning now to your community focus, as we've been reporting, the deal to raise the debt ceiling is now in the hands of the Senate after earning bipartisan support in the House last night. Joining us live now via Zoom, Congressman Jake Auchincloss of Massachusetts. Thanks so much for being here. Good to be with you. So you voted in favor of the bill last night, saying in a statement, quote, I disagree with elements of the bill, but governing requires compromise, not absolutism, end quote. So when you voted last night, what parts of the bill did you wish you could have said no to? Well, first of all, why did I say yes? I said yes because the full faith uh, of the United States government was on the line. That means people's retirement accounts, that means people's jobs. That means the United States geoeconomic standing relative to adversaries like the Chinese Communist Party. All of it was at stake uh, for a default. And that's not an acceptable uh, alternative. And so voting yes is about governing responsibly. Now, what would I have changed? <laughs> I think the best way to, to answer that is just to draw a contrast with what we did last term when Democrats were in charge of the House, we invested in infrastructure, we invested in domestic manufacturing and lowering health care prices by empowering Medicare to negotiate. Uh, we, uh, we invested in infrastructure, clean water, bridges. What do the Republicans do when they finally have leverage and they have the speaker's gavel? Well, they try to take away food security from the working poor and they try to gut the IRS for the money that we gave it to go after the wealthiest individuals and corporations to ensure they paid their fair share, which would have been budget positive uh, in the in the medium and long run. So it's just a difference of values and a difference of approaches. As we mentioned, the Senate is now considering this bill and time is, of course, of the essence. But senators on both sides of the aisle are criticizing some components of the bill. Uh, is there a chance an amended version comes back to the House? Highly unlikely. We're talking about the United States Senate, so I'm not going to speak with a high degree of confidence. But Given the timeline for default that Secretary Yellen of the Treasury has given us, uh, an amended version being sent back to the House would likely trigger a default, and that's really not acceptable. So the Senate needs to pass the clean version that the House just passed, send it to Joe Biden's desk, but sign it, and then let's move forward. And let's think about how we, one, protect the progress that we have made over the last two and a half years in health care and infrastructure and climate action, and, and also uh, prevent... Uh, extreme GOP cuts. The things that they wanted to do in their original bill were taking away 200,000 Head Start positions for uh, early education for kids, uh, cutting veterans health care benefits, uh, things that just don't represent the values and the priorities of the great mass of my constituents. As we mentioned earlier, this bill includes clawing back some of the unspent and unallocated COVID money. Uh, do you think that there's a potential that, that we're really going to feel that here in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, or, or do you think maybe that will sort of go unnoticed? The rescissions of the COVID money are really from federal programs. So money that's been allocated to states or localities through the American Rescue Plan two years ago, that money is is with those states and localities permanently. Uh, so I think there's going to be minimal adverse impact there. There might be some unemployment insurance um, accounting issues to work through uh, with Massachusetts. But um, overall, the COVID rescission is, is really more coming at the federal level. And just quickly, we've got about 15 seconds left. Uh, you're certainly not a member of the, the far left uh, fraction of your party, but do you think that there were some members of your own chamber who sort of crossed their fingers last night, voted no, and relied on folks like you to say yes? Uh, I voted my conscience. I voted what was best for the country, uh, and I have one. I got one vote to allocate. All right. Congressman Jake Auchincloss of Massachusetts, thanks so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Next at four.